The writer of Psalm 100 calls us to enter God's gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. You know, every day people enter doors just like this one, whether to an auditorium, a church, a house, or even a figurative door to an outside worship event. We enter into these doorways or portals from many different places, both spiritually and physically. We come from a variety of different personal experiences and emotions. Happy, sad, hurried, relaxed, energized, tired, rejoicing, mourning, peaceful, frustrated, and more. In addition to bringing thanks and praise, we sometimes bring burdens we're carrying. We can even unknowingly bring the excess baggage of false expectations and unhealthy attitudes that can keep us from truly entering God's courts in worship. Sometimes it's easy to enter into a worship experience of God with thanksgiving and praise. Other times it can be challenging or even really hard. Still, God invites us to come. We can learn something about approaching God in worship as we look at the prophet Isaiah and his heavenly worship experience as chronicled in Isaiah chapter 6. First, it's important to remember that God invited Isaiah to this event. Isaiah didn't simply decide, hmm, I think I'm going to go and check out what God is doing in his throne room. Instead, this event comes like a divine surprise worship party that Isaiah discovers that he was invited to attend. And listen to what he said. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord, high and exalted, seated on a throne. In the year that King Uzziah died, which means it's the middle of a major political upheaval and a national spiritual decay that weighed heavy on Isaiah's heart. I saw the Lord high and exalted. God invited and brought Isaiah into his very own heavenly dwelling. In the middle of our life and our world experiences, whatever they are, God calls you and me to encounter him in worship. We can choose to enter or not, but his invitation is always there for us. But it's on his terms, not ours. Note that there's no indication that Isaiah came with any preconceived ideas or expectations. He never asked, I wonder if I'll like the music, the message, the venue, or the worship style. Isaiah came with no demands, no plans, no bargaining chips, no critiques. Whatever he wore that day, whatever his personal preferences or expectations for worship were, are irrelevant. All we know is that Isaiah was overcome and overwhelmed by what he saw as he found himself in the very presence of God. Isaiah comes with a profound sense of awe and humility as he understood that this was God's domain, not his. As we read and process the Approaching God section of the book, Worship for a Lifetime, I pray that God will show us how we can truly enter his courts with thanksgiving and praise. If you're like me, there may be attitudes and mindsets that God reveals, things that make it hard or even prevent us from experiencing the kind of worship he desires for us. When we approach God with hearts and minds focused on him and not ourselves, when we enter his presence with awe and a readiness to meet him, then we can move into a deeper and life-changing worship for a lifetime.